earlier in this course and also in micro one or in intermediate micro, we have learned that under certain conditions, com competitive markets are efficient. And they're always efficient if the welfare of a consumer depends on that consumer's choices. And if on the side of the producers, the profit of a firm also only depends on that firm's choices, namely the choices of what inputs they use and what they produce, what products and, and uh, in what quantity. But we've also learned that if these conditions are not fulfilled, the first fundamental welfare theorem breaks down and we are no longer in that first best solution where everything is efficient. Now, one reason why markets may fail, and not necessarily fail in a bad way, but one reason was public goods, where we learned that there are free rider problems that lead to suboptimal provisions of public goods, and where governments can intervene to enhance welfare. In this series of videos, under the umbrella of lecture four, so it's the fourth part of the course, we will talk about a different type of market failure, namely externalities. Externalities are always present whenever the action of one participant in the market affects another participant. So to give you the formal definition, an externality is a link between economic agents that lies outside the price system, where my action as a participant affects the welfare of another market participant, but that market participant neither compensates me nor I compensate them. Now, I'm going to give you an example for. A, a big externality, a huge challenge for, for, for humanity, that is global warming. Okay? So we, we know that global warming is a, a huge uh, problem and has uh, lots of negative effects on many people uh, around the globe. Um, it has effects for farmers, it has effects um, for almost everyone uh, you know, for homeowners at the coast who have the challenge of rising sea levels, um, it, it lead, can lead to all sorts of diseases and so on. So there are clear negative effects. We also know what some of the causes of global warming are, namely that, namely CO2 emissions. And CO2 emissions don't come out of nowhere. CO2 emissions, they come uh, from production and consumption. Whenever we burn fossil fuels, we emit CO2. And we know also from science that there is a link between CO2 emissions and global warming. And so global warming is basically the externality here, or CO2 emissions are the externality, both, both in, a, in, in combination, um, because the people who are negatively affected by global warming are not getting compensated by those people who emit the CO2 through their production and or consumption. And so, so it's, a, it's an externality because it is outside the price mechanism of the, the classical market as, as, we, as we know it. Now, here, here is just a, a slide where you can see the increase in, 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 in temperatures gradually since uh, 1880, since we can actually measure uh, temperatures around the globe in, 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 in many measuring points. And we can see that there is this very clear upward trend uh, since the mid 20th century. And as much as there, there may be a good few people who dispute that this is actually man-made, that the consensus uh, across most scientists would be that, that this, this increase is actually man-made and is, is to a large extent based on, on externality. Okay, so, so the market failure is here is basically that because we as the consumers 
or the producers that emit CO2, uh, because we do not compensate those people that are negatively affected by CO2 emissions and then consequently by global warming, we produce too much CO2. And that, that leads to an inefficiency that is very, very costly for us, but especially also for future generations. So global warming is the example for, a, um, for, for a, an externality. Now, what has been done uh, to address this? Well, there have been attempts to, to address this, this efficiency problem. One example for that is the Kyoto Protocol, for which you can, about which you can read a lot more in, in the textbook. Um, just here in a nutshell, um, 170 nations got together to negotiate a pact to limit carbon dioxide emissions. And that is obviously not an easy task because on the one hand, you have carbon dioxide that, that contributes to global warming and needs to be curbed. On the other hand, reducing the use of fossil fuels is very, very difficult. It's difficult on the one hand because it has economic costs, obviously, because we need to all change you know, the cars we drive, the way we produce. But it, there, there's also lots of ethical issues involved. So you, you have the obvious problem that a lot of the production that is heavy on fossil fuels these days occurs in low to middle income countries. And so who are we as people who live in richer nations to tell them to produce less CO2 when one of the reasons why we have become such, such prosperous, economically prosperous societies was that we were not held to the same environmental standards and could basically in the mid 20th century and, and afterwards produce with whatever technology we wanted and then had no environmental standards. So, so you, you should recognize that there is a lot of ethical challenges here as well as economic and, and, and political. Where the economists are strong in this point is to, to, that they understand what's behind the externality. And they may not be able to produce a solution or to propose one, but at least they, they can contribute to the understanding of, of you know, what, what, what are the economic challenges behind that. So as a, to, to, to move away from specific examples and to think more broadly about externalities, there are different types of externalities. So externalities can be positive as well as negative. So global warming is a clear example of a negative externality, but there are also positive ones where my action has a positive effect on someone else. So where someone else would like me to actually do more of that, and externalities can also occur in consumption as well as in production. So the, the production externality, you know, if you think about factories such as the one shown over here, they produce, and that obviously is, is, is beneficial for the economy, but they also pollute the air, which has all sorts of negative effects on air quality, health, global warming, and so on. Okay, so, so their production clearly has an effect on third parties. There's also consumption externalities. If you think about, uh, you know, people driving cars or anything that we do that that uh, is uh, that, that that causes emissions of, of carbon dioxide, um, has similar negative effects to um, externalities in 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 production to negative externalities in production. Um, now, is there an example for a positive externality? Well, certainly. So one example is, is vaccinations. By getting vaccinated, I myself am protected against a certain disease. But I also, if it's an infectious disease, I can also then protect others because the, the fact that I cannot get the disease also means that I cannot infect someone else. 
So that is a positive externality because my behavior positively affects the health of other people around. Now, there is also a specific type of externality that's mutual, that is reciprocal. So a reciprocal externality. What does that mean? Well, it means an externality where it typically a positive externality between two parties that is mutual. So the classic textbook example is a, a beekeeper and the owner of an orchard. If they have their businesses close to one another, the bees need the pollen, um, but the, obviously the, 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 the trees to bear fruit also need to be pollinated. And so um, what we get from that mutual externality, from the reciprocal externality, is we get honey and fruit, whatever, um, that we would otherwise not as easily get. Now, there are also um, other examples, especially in urban economics when you, or in, in geography, when you look at, for example, clustering of certain industries um, or certain types of businesses in an area, right? So there are cities that, uh, you know, that attract a lot of different types of businesses and, and bars, clubs, restaurants, and theaters, and so on. They all add to the, the attractiveness of that city. And so each of those uh, exerts a, a positive externality on the others by creating this buzz that makes it attractive for people to, to go there and, uh, or even move there and, and spend money there. But there are also other things that happen in markets that look like externalities, but they are actually not. And these are events that happen through the price mechanism. But these are adjustments that happen to the price mechanism. So these are changes in people's welfare or the profits of firms that are driven by changes in prices. Examples here are oil prices or house prices. Right? If oil prices fluctuate, that has a knock-on effect on all sorts of consumer prices because production is, is oil heavy and because you know, we drive cars and, and, and uh, you know, lots of businesses drive cars, lots of businesses use oil to, to produce. Uh, another example is house prices that then affect rents, that then affect the cost of services. Is that an externality? No. And the reason is simply that it does not lead, if, if it works through the price mechanism, it does not lead to the same type of inefficiency that an externality would, would lead. Now, a change in prices may still not be desirable. It may still require government intervention, but the government intervention here is more to reduce the distributional consequence. Right? So, for example, if you have a huge hike in house prices, certain people may not be able anymore to afford a house, and the government step, may step in to help these groups buy a house with all the potential knock-on effects this may have. But the government cannot make this market more efficient. Whereas, if we have an externality such as through pollution, um, global warming being an externality, what we have is we have overproduction, and it's actually efficient if the government steps in. The government can actually enhance efficiency by stepping in and either taxing the, peop the, the firms that pollute uh, or compensating those uh, that, that lose out from pollution. Um, and and these, these sort of actions that we will learn about in this course can actually enhance efficiency. If, the, if it's a pecuniary externality, if it goes through the market price, that those efficiency gains are not to be had. 